Hello everyone, welcome back as we continue to get the replay set up here. Now that we have backed up our important front end files and updated our drivers, we can move on to diving in a little bit more. Since the replay is basically a mini PC, first let's take a look at a great way to get some Windows programs installed. We are going to want to open a web browser and navigate to a website called Ninite. Ninite will quickly and easily allow us to install some great programs. Once we get to the site, here we are presented with a list of applications to choose from. We just need to check what we want to have installed. Let's have a quick rundown here. I have been using Opera for its built-in web blocking. Next, I would be careful about choosing an antivirus for the replay without doing a little bit of research. I had originally grabbed AVG. It ended up flagging the replay front end as a virus, and then it deleted it. Below that, under Developer Tools, we have Notepad++. This would be a good one to grab if you plan on manually editing any of the front end configuration files. Then, grabbing Discord will allow us to join the replay channel on the replay. Next, TeamViewer will allow us to log in from another computer or phone to remotely control the replay. Following that, while I did not grab it for the replay, I usually grab Classic Start Menu. It will let you have a more clean looking start menu compared to the one that you originally get when you install Windows 10. Then, VLC to play media files. I use Music B as an iTunes alternative, Audacity to do audio work, and Handbrake works really well for encoding raw video files. If you're going to be installing Para GVE to run Vectrix games, you will need to grab Java. I have been using GIMP to make thumbnails for the videos, 7-Zip to unpack game files, Foxit will allow you to read PDFs, usually you can find game manuals and strategy guides in PDF, LibreOffice for an alternative to Microsoft Office, and Steam to get some PC gaming going on later. Once you select all the programs, you want to scroll down and click Get Your Ninite. After the Ninite program downloads, simply run it. After it finishes, everything will be cleanly installed. That will get us the essential Windows programs out of the way. Now that we have Windows programs out of the way, let's take a look at putting the LaunchBox front end and RetroArch on. First, we are going to want to head over to the LaunchBox website. Put in an email address and you'll be sent a download link. Next, we need to head on over to RetroArch. Here, you will want to get the download 64-bit link. This will allow you to make LaunchBox very portable. You could even set everything up on another PC and drag it over to the replay. Now that we have all the files we need, we will want to run the LaunchBox installer. Follow the wizard here. If you have the Hard Drive Bay add-on with a hard drive installed, you're going to want to create a folder in it. Then install LaunchBox to that folder. Now, just let the installer run. It will take a minute since this is the first boot. After it boots, close it. Next, we will need to go into the folder where we installed LaunchBox. Inside this folder, we will need to create a new folder and call it Emulators. Once that is done, get your RetroArch download and open it. Create a folder called RetroArch, and then drag everything from the archive into this new folder. After all the folders move over, now we will want to start the RetroArch EXE here. First, we need to go to the Online Updater, and then select Cores. This is what RetroArch calls Emulators. You will want to grab the ones for whatever system you are looking to play. To see the ones I personally like, you can check out the in-depth emulation FAQ over at the community forum. For the sake of this video, we will be grabbing Stella to run 2600 games and Genesis Plus GX to run Genesis games. Usually, RetroArch will automatically see a plugged-in controller. However, if you need to remap or change your input settings, you can press backspace a few times on a keyboard to return to the top menu. Then scroll over to the gear icon and scroll down to input. Once there, press a button to go into the input menu. This will allow you to change your bindings and menu button. Now that we have our menu and controller buttons bound, we can hit the backspace key once and scroll up to video options. In the video options menu here, there will be a setting for start in full screen. We'll want to toggle that on. After RetroArch goes full screen, we can hit the escape key and move on over to LaunchBox. Now, let's slide on over to LaunchBox here. First, if you're watching this and currently have LaunchBox 8.4 or below, 
you will want to go to your folder and run launchbox next. Soon, next will be the default and the original UI will be gone. However, as of this video, they are still separate. Next is more optimized and it should run better on lower end hardware like the replay. Once it loads, since we don't have anything imported, an add games list might automatically pop up. However, we are going to close it so that we can go through the steps and use the menu to bring it back up so you know where everything is. First, we are going to want to click the three lines to access the menu. Then go to Manage Emulators so that we can associate RetroArch with LaunchBox. In the Manage here, we are going to want to click Add. Then, for emulator name, type RetroArch. Next, we will need to browse to the RetroArch EXE inside our emulators folder and select it. Now, under Associated Platforms, these are all the emulators that RetroArch is set to use along with their cores. However, some are missing from this list. To add a missing platform, we will need to double click in a blank space at the bottom here and then add the system name typed exactly as it is written in the ROM import screen. Then select the core we want to use. A list of my preferred cores can be found at the in-depth emulator FAQ linked in the video description below. After RetroArch and LaunchBox have become friends, we can now go back to the menu, go to Import, and then select ROM files. Now the import wizard will guide us along. Click Next. Then, if you are importing a single system set of games, you can click Add Folder. However, just for tutorial's sake here, let's click on Add File and add a single game. Now, pressing Open will add Dragster to our list here. We need to select Atari 2600 and tell it to use RetroArch if it is not selected already. Next, if you have your ROM files stored externally, you will want to select Use Files in their current location. Otherwise, if you have them somewhere else and you want to put them in the same folder as your LaunchBox install, select Move Files to my LaunchBox Game folder. Now, it will ask about artwork and video snaps. It would be a good idea to uncheck any video snaps to save space on the replay. The first list will grab from the LaunchBox Games database, and the next one is for Emu Movies. If you're really into having nice artwork and extras for your games, it is definitely worth it to create an Emu Movies account and consider getting a paid membership. Lastly is a list of custom import options. I would leave these go for now. Leaving combined ROMs with matching titles will be helpful if you have a full set of games that include EU and US versions. It works okay, but sometimes it can miss a few of the same name games. You can combine them manually though. Pressing next will show the screen of the games going to be imported. And finally, clicking finish will start the process. Once the import process is complete, you'll have to click OK and the imported games will show up. Here you can see we have Dragster. Double clicking on it will start the game in RetroArch Stella Core and we can game away. To exit, we can either press the escape key, the Xbox button, or the binding we set in the menu. Start and select, or L3 and R3, or a combination of those. RetroArch is a great piece of software and it makes things very easy to keep track of. It supports quite a lot of systems, however it does not support everything. You will need to go hunt down a standalone emulator to play something not supported in RetroArch. You might also prefer an emulator that does not have a core. To do this, it is very similar to what we just did. For the sake of this tutorial, I happened to grab Kega Fusion, but the steps apply to almost any standalone emulator. The downside to this is that you might need a keyboard and mouse to navigate around or exit the emulator. To get started, we will want to go back to our LaunchBox folder. Once there, we will need to go into the emulators folder and then create a new folder. To keep things a little cleaner, I have gone to down here, creating a Sega folder and then making a Fusion folder. This will help down the line if you want to add other Sega based systems like the Dreamcast or Saturn. With the folder structure created, we now need to drag the emulator files over. Once our files are set, we will need to go back into the Manage Emulator setting. Click Add New Emulator, type the name in, and browse to the Fusion EXE. Then, we will need to visit the Associated Platforms tab. Double click to be able to type in the window, and then type the name of the system exactly as it appears in the ROM import wizard list. In this case, Sega Genesis. You can make the new emulator the default by selecting the checkbox. In this case, since LaunchBox is already using RetroArch, it will ask if you're sure that you want to do this. 
select OK. Now, when we go to import Genesis games, we will want to select Fusion as the emulator and proceed as before. Once the game imports, we will have to define the controls inside of Fusion. Once that is done, we can game away. If you want to use a RetroArch core to run a game without changing a default that you set, you can go to Launch With and then select the core or other emulator you would like to use for that singular game. Personally, I would stick with RetroArch unless you can't get a system to run well using one of its cores. That is one of the many great things about PC though. All the options and the freedom to choose which one works best for you. I know this video was a little long, but I hope that it helps as many users as possible get sorted and lets them dive into some retro gaming. Like I mentioned before, I'll link to the list of cores below in the video description. If you have any questions, feel free to sign up at the forum or join the Discord server. In my next video, I am aiming to take a look at getting Steam running, then users can try their hand at some PC gaming. However, until then, happy gaming.